Hello, and welcome to my channel. I haven't named it yet, but I'm your host, Bill, and today I'm talking about performance difference that I got going to my new CPU, the 11700K, with a DDR4 3600 mega transfer CL16 RAM from my old system, a 6700K DDR4 3000 mega transfer CL15 memory. <clears throat> Testing will be done with the same GPU, a Gigabyte RTX 3070, and yes, before you ask, I waited in the long queues to acquire the card. So let's get right in. Uh, before I, I guess before I start, I should mention that the old system, the CPU was overclocked to 4.4 gigahertz all-core, and single-core could boost up to 4.7. I didn't do any extreme tweaking, that's just what the regular voltage. While the new system, the 11700K, I let the motherboard from Asus do the AI overclocking and it allowed for a 5 gigahertz overclock. So the first test is a CPU profile. <clears throat> You'll notice very quickly that the under max threads, more than double the performance. 16 threads, again, eight threads, more than double, about double the performance. So you can see right there, under 19% more, so that means it's 19% more than double the performance. So then when we get to four threads, <clears throat> sorry, we're starting to see that the CPUs are act very similarly. And that's because they're both 14 nanometer processes. So generationally, they're very similar, but you just get more threads, more cores, and a higher clock speed. Jumping over to uh, Fire Strike Extreme. Sorry, I was double checking. I took screenshots <clears throat> of everything first. You can see the 3D Mark score, significant boost. I actually got better graphics score with my 6700K. The, the clock speed was better for some reason in the two systems. Here you can see that the physics score is significantly improved as expected with double the cores. And I guess the key takeaway here is the combined score because that's where we really see the differences and I want everybody to pay attention to that. 3 mark is just an easy way to do a comparative test. It's not the end all solution. So because I was using the same GPU, it allows me to compare where the bottlenecks are in the system, in either of the systems. So I got more FPS in Firestrike Extreme. So that indicates that I had a slight CPU bottleneck at the Extreme, which is uh, 2K resolution, which is actually the resolution of my monitor. Going to Firestrike Ultra, This is a 4K test. Can actually see right here my key indicator that I talked about the combined test that they're near on identical run to run variants. This means that I'm GPU limited. So the upgrade to the 11700K from the 67 wouldn't be worth it if I was running a 4K monitor. And again, can clearly see physics is greatly improved. And like I mentioned before, graphics for some reason scored better on the old system. Despite the clocks, they're running identically. And again, I just want to repeat that it ran the exact same GPU. I upgraded my system and just moved the GPU over. Then this is regular Fire Strike, so this is a 1080p test. Now take a look at the combined score. 
I almost, well, not quite, but I added around 20 FPS, which means I was, if I was running a 1080p monitor, I'd be hard locked CPU bottleneck for a 37 or RTX 3070. Again, physics score improved and the graphics score near and identical. So the next one is the PCI uh, interface data rate. So this is just kind of a fun test within 3 d Mark to see what the bandwidth of the PCI. So the 6700K ran PCI 16X Gen 3, while the 11700 runs PCI 16, PC, or PCI Express Gen 4 16. And we can see that we get an FPS and uh, bandwidth boost, but there's almost no meaningful difference in the, well, the graphics test scores, and I'm going to show pictures of um, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and there's no meaningful difference in gaming FPS. It's just there's more there in the background. Uh, Port Royal, this is a RTX test within 3D Mark, and the 3D Mark score is basically the same. I'm going to just move on quickly from that. Time Spy Extreme, you can see that my scores are different, but that's mainly because of the CPU. The graphics scores are near and identical, run-to-run -run variants. And the last one, regular Time Spy, again, near and identical scores. Just the CPU is more powerful. So now for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Let me get my two images side by side. The settings, the settings, they're the same. So now performance. 95th percentile, 104, 80, 55. With the 11th gen, 94, 112, and 59. So the scores are basically the same. The only difference is that I've got more CPU overhead. The average FPS is the same. So where does this leave us? Is the upgrade worthwhile? It kind of depends on your use case, in my opinion. So, for me, I upgraded to the 11th gen mainly because I wanted a system that I could take to Windows 11. I am a little bit lazy, and I have SATA-based SSDs. They're on the other side of that panel. And I didn't really want to reinstall Windows. So I moved my drives over here, got the system up and running, I did have to re-type in my key. I was hoping not to have to do that, but this is where I am. So I did the upgrade because I wanted to go to Windows 11. I want a little bit more uh, CPU performance than what I was getting with the 6700K. And uh, I wasn't confident about the Intel 12th gen the reviews were coming out about them having compatibility problems with uh, a bunch of games and i just did not want to deal with that plus the price of entry was really high so i bought essentially last gen when it was on sale and i feel it worked out great the the gpu is not the bottleneck it never was at my 2k resolution uh, jumping up to 4K, the, the GPU would still be the bottleneck. The CPU would be 
idling there with eight cores i have more overhead to kind of run stuff in the background and not lose much fps uh with you know the software that runs the leds and uh the headphone software and kind of everything else you know this is my setup you know everything runs on software these days so it's just an easier solution to to deal with for me so would i recommend this upgrade depends it depends on your needs your requirements and what you want from your system also windows 10 has an expiration date now so at some point with a 67 you would have to upgrade anyways but um knowing what i do now would i have done the upgrade yes because i'm probably going to keep this system for at least five six seven years pass it on to my son so uh with the eight core system it should give it a longer life mind a four, the four core eight thread lasted five years i bought it brand new when pci gen 3 came out and ddr4 just came out so uh again i had no real problems with it but uh these are my opinions and kind of showing the performance difference for kind of the average home user and my thoughts as an average home user without going deep into the spec because I'm not an expert at talking about that kind of stuff. So I hope uh, people find this meaningful and helpful. Have a great day.